knowledge that all cabbies have of their area is similar to the knowledge that any entrepreneur must have of his or her business. Whether it's finding your way down Deansgate or finding the words to the first page of some business plan, what's essential is that you know where you're going before you can even work out how you can get there. Direction is all important, but with business there's no shortcut or backstreet route. To be successful, a clear and intelligent business plan is essential. An entrepreneur may have a cracking business idea. There may be an exceptional chance they could make a good living out of it. But if the discipline of business planning isn't in place, it ain't going to happen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Sounds like a cliche, but it's also the truth. In this series, we're going to consider the whole process of business planning, from a business getting off the starting blocks to going from good to great. We're going to consider every angle of planning, from finance and accounts to sales and marketing, the people, the processes, from ICT to e-commerce. We also have on hand our gloriously opinionated panel of experts who are going to share all their experiences, the good, the bad, and some of them the downright ugly. But the first stop, oh thanks mate, is to understand the principles of business planning, which is why I've spent 18 quid to find out why. 18 quid. From my point of view, it's, uh, it, it develops and defines a map of the journey of the, of the company, where they want to go, and to coordinate both internal and external inputs to help build that plan. In recent times, uh, the, the existence of a good plan has actually helped some companies survive the credit crunch. The length of time to write a business plan would probably start from a few weeks, but could take several months. Uh, because if you think about it, it's a, it's a process, it's not just filling in boxes, you've actually got to talk to other people, get their feedback, collate it, uh, edit it, check it, and uh, then, then package it and present it for intended audiences. I, th I think it, it, it's absolutely vital to have the aspirational elements of your business and where you're actually going prior to doing the business planning. How do you set uh, the plan parameters without understanding your own personal and business aspirations? I said that the business plan has to be the company's own document. They have to put their own words into it. It has to be their strategy and not a document that then just sits on the shelf and gets dusted off every blue moon. Quite often business plans are formulaic. It's more important to have the formula right rather than the content. You know, it's got to be a business plan specific to that business, you know, not just ticking all the boxes. What we tend to find with many businesses is that they actually jump straight in, go in to do the business, and then six months down the line, no business plan, nothing to follow, stuck in a corner, and then it's back to square one. So we want to try and ensure that businesses start with the business plan at the very beginning. I think following on what, what Tim said earlier, what's important in business planning is also the purpose of the plan. Is it done for your own purposes to see how the business is going to work or is it done for access to finance? The biggest problem I come across in business planning is over-optimistic uh, projections and uh, very little on weaknesses and threats to the business. Everybody seems to think it's the best idea and it's going to work. Well, you need to concentrate more on the weaknesses as much as the uh, opportunities. I think you, you also have an issue with that a business plan can often solely focus on the financial elements, so you know, the projections will be all in place. But they forget to look at the marketing element, you know, what is the size of the marketplace, can they actually take a part of that? And also, what are the resources and operational requirements of the business? And you have to build all of that into the business plan as well. I'll give you an example of what I'm working on at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the chap is trying to raise some finance, I think he's trying to raise about £76,000. A small amount of money really. Um, and his projections are showing something like a £6 million turnover in year three. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and I've had to go back to him and say, well, reduce them by 75%. And he's come back and I've researched the market, it's, it, it's 50%. And it's still not going to happen. I was going to say, the thing is, if the business plan demonstrates that, that particular um, problem of being over-optimistic in year three, business turning over £6 million in year one is only turning over... 25,000, it does actually put in jeopardy your application for finance because you, people just say this business is 
you know, the business plan is bonkers. We often see forecasts that have been produced, what we would say is like the hockey stick style, where they just go like that. And in reality, how many businesses could see that sort of sales turnover consistently? It's, that's, it's, they need to be realistic and put trends into the businesses, put some seasonality into the forecast as well and show the true picture. I think you, you do get a situation though where society and its comments demands uh, a business should have that sort of growth when in fact it's actually unrealistic. So you will see this hockey stick purely because somebody said, well, you've got to achieve the 20% year on year on year on year on year growth, mm -hmm. which is actually unachievable. And what you actually have to build into your business plan is a, a very robust method of reviewing what it is you're actually doing so that you're creating a flexibility within that business plan so that you can change it if required. So if the numbers aren't going to happen, you can then change the resources that have been built into the business plan quite readily. In, in the current climate, it, it, your financial projections have to be absolutely robust mm -hmm. uh, because the banks are looking for any excuse to turn you down. Uh, compare that to two or three years ago and, and that would have sailed through. Um, so yeah, it's critical and going back to what we said earlier on, be optimistic about what you're going to achieve. Yeah, I mean gone are the days where you can just turn up and have a chat with the bank manager and, and uh, get an overdraft or a term loan. Um, the business plan is key. Any evidence you can provide to, to back up what you've said in the business plan as well is, is really vital at the moment. So if you can give evidence of the contracts that you've got um, demonstrate the skills of the management team. Any evidence that you can bring to support that gives more, provides more confidence to the lender to, to make that investment. I think the economic climate such as we're experiencing at the moment uh, demonstrates the requirement for a business plan. A business plan that is followed and is robust will demonstrate a business that is well run and is uh, aware of customer service, customer satisfaction. And I think when there are fairly tight situations within the economic climate, you have to focus on what you're actually delivering to the marketplace and the business plan will assist you to do that. So it isn't just a question of focusing on uh, the finance as such. You have to build everything from the base upwards and it, it, it uh, culminates in the financial planning. So as well as um, the internal and external uh, sources of advice, one thing advisors got to be careful of is that even in a fairly good relationship, sometimes the MD doesn't reveal some internal interpersonal or succession issues, which might be clouding some of the answers and it, it can sometimes take time to bottom these out. So that's maybe a word to the advisors to be careful to uh, not assume everything's rosy on the surface. Well, the consequences of not writing a business plan for me, it's one word, it's survival. The whole business could be put at risk if you don't have one. Uh, for example, no route map to success, haphazard planning, unfocused activity, uncontrolled use of resources, poor teamwork, lack of communication, um, at best leading to reduced profitability and at worst insolvent trading. So as we have seen, long-term sustainability and profitable revenue growth can be achieved with a dynamic business plan. In fact, it's become clear to me that a business can't even survive without one. Next time, we continue our journey looking at what finance and accountancy knowledge is needed to help a business go from good to great, which being a bit of a tighty myself is a subject very close to my heart. I mean, 18 quid, <laughs> I ask you. <laughs>